What is the magic sauce that allows a PlayStation 4 to run in the massive amounts of dynamic grass in Ghost of Tsushima? Find out more in this video. So, what did Sony do? Did they just manage to download more RAM into the PlayStation 4? I don't think so. But what else could they possibly do? How did they manage to render the physics of the dynamic grass in Ghost of Tsushima? And the answer lies in this, the graphics card. But where does the key to the secret lie? Well, if you look at the grass, you should see one thing, is that every single plant is the exact same. And that's the key to figuring out this puzzle. And let's get right into it. But before we do that, remember to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to avoid missing out on any future videos. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Hey there, this is me again, but with a scripted voice this time. I use this one to better explain things to people. So here we go. Now, to first understand the secret on how the vegetation in Ghost of Tsushima is rendered, we need to really know how a CPU is made up. Physics have so far always been computed on the CPU, which is why that is important. What you see on this graphic is the different parts of the CPU that overall allow us to quickly compute calculations. The first part is a fetch and decode unit. This one is responsible for taking the instruction that you send to the CPU, such as 2 plus 3, to then prepare it to actually execute it. The second part is the arithmetic logic unit, or ALU in short. This is where the actual calculation takes place and where the example 2 plus 3 becomes 5. The next one is execution context. It is where the values 2 and 3 will be stored. The right hand side of the process has all different parts that allow it to make single computations faster. The data cache and the memory prefetcher give the processor the ability to get the necessary memory faster, aka the original values of 2 and 3. The out of order control and branch prediction on the other hand allow the instruction to be fetched and executed faster. What the right hand side exactly does though is irrelevant for this video. What is relevant however is the fact that the amount of space on the processor taking up for the actual calculation, aka the ALU, is absolutely tiny. So much space is used up for making an individual calculation faster. But what if we don't need the calculation being done fast? And here is where the graphics card comes in. It cuts out all the other fancy stuff and instead RAM packs the ALU. When I say not fast, I mean not fast for a computer. Computer graphics are not fast for a computer, which can do way more than a billion calculations per second. At 30 frames per second for a fluid game, you can see that a computer can basically take its time for each frame. So, let's try to beef up the ALU a bit more to be able to compute more calculations at the same time and get rid of all the unnecessary speed up stuff that would only help a single calculation at a time. Now, this is a figure representing the structure of a graphics card. All the metaphorical fat has been trimmed. It is all just the instruction fetch and decode unit, the ALU and the execution context. There is however one more trick used. A single instruction unit is responsible for multiple ALU and context units. This is possible only when the same instructions are used on every single ALU. Different values are also okay. That's what the different execution contexts are used for. Calculating 2 plus 3 on one ALU and 4 plus 7 on another is thus possible. This in turn allows for extremely high throughput. Do you remember the cryptocurrency craze which skyrocketed the graphics card prices? That's precisely because that's what cryptocurrency mining does, doing the same calculation over and over again until you get the result you want. Basically, the definition of insanity. At this point, we have all the prerequisites that we need. Remember the key to the secret that I've told you earlier? Take another really close look at the Ghost of Tsushima footage. You can see here that every single piece of vegetation is the exact same to the ones around it. And if you can put one and one together, you should see that this is a problem the GPU can solve. Every single plant has the same physical properties. The only differences are some parameters like the plant's position for example. The same applies to the leaves in a one-on-one -on -one battle later on in the gameplay reveal, which really do look fantastic. Why wasn't this technique used beforehand though? For this, there is an analogy. Imagine you want to get to some place fast and all you had available to you were a selection of bicycles. The best cause of action would be to take one of the bicycles and go fast. But what if the task was to instead transport a number of bikes? Maybe the bikes have drugs in them? Not that I would know anything about that. Then it might be better to try to cycle with multiple of them at the same time. 
Cycling with multiple bikes is, you guessed it, more difficult than cycling with just a single one. And this difficulty is an analogy to coding. It is more difficult to program the same operation running in parallel without losing significant performance. So, it's simply this difficulty that had caused this technique to not be used in the past. Another reason why the physics were computed on the CPU beforehand was because physics are very consequential. The physics of a next step is highly dependent on the previous step. Executing the individual calculations quickly, thus on the CPU, is more important than doing multiple of them at the same time. With the grass and ghost of Tsushima, however, this is not the case. The physics of the vegetation doesn't really affect anything but the vegetation itself. This creates a situation where physics don't need to be calculated quickly anymore and can thus be delegated to the GPU. Of course, rendering the physics on the GPU is not a free task. It takes away from other resources to render it, but Ghost of Tsushima handles this graciously, as apart from the vegetation and a few enemies, there is only little going on in the scene. Just compare it to GTA 5, where there are a metric ton of cars, pedestrians and other things going on in the world. Thus, the available computation resources of the PS4 can be moved towards the vegetation. Overall, this is the secret of Ghost of Tsushima's grass. The physics are simply handled on the GPU itself, allowing this large volume of dynamic grass and leaves to be rendered effectively. While many games are downgraded after their initial E3 showing, I don't think this one will do that to a significant degree or at all. That is of course as long as the rest of the game doesn't require increased complexity elsewhere. Even if this does occur however, I believe the game will be smart enough to handle that dynamically. And as such, we'll be getting an awesome game with an amazing setting and awesome graphical fidelity. So, this is a secret to how Sucker Bunch managed to render this massive amount of grass on the PlayStation 4. The code is simply optimized to run the grass physics on the GPU itself. Every single generation of consoles has a cycle of rendering techniques getting better and better. And precisely this rendering of physics on the GPU itself is this generation's big leap in computer graphics. Maybe you heard a rumor some time ago that Sony's next console, the PlayStation 5, will use a dedicated GPU. A dedicated GPU would allow the rendering of the physics on the GPU itself to unfold even further. And since the rendering of physics on the GPU itself is this generation's big leap in computer graphics, it will inevitably be used in next generation's consoles as well. And thus, this rumor of a dedicated GPU in the next console kind of starts to make sense, doesn't it? Thank you so much for watching this video. A tremendous amount of effort goes into making it, and I really hope that you can appreciate that. So, if you liked it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and also subscribe with a notification bell click as well. I can also recommend you to watch some of my older videos. An example would be the Yakuza video on where I go into the culture of Japan and how that influences design or the Crash Bandicoot video where I go into the concept of nostalgia and see how nostalgia affects the enjoyment of someone's video game. I guess that's all. Thank you very much for watching and I really hope to see you next time. Bye!